Taylor was popping. We are on Twitch. We are not live. You can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, today is Documentary Monday. We recently got blocked. We did the Cray Twins, which is probably one of the most interesting documentaries. I ain't even gonna lie, that shit was fire. It was like, it was, they, them was some negative boys, especially Ron. And then Freddie, Freddie, dude, Freddie, whoever his name, Freddie Freeman. Crazy. So I did a poll because this one got blocked. Obviously, the winner of the poll, it was uh, Manchester UK Crime Underworld or Charles Bronson because it got blocked. So y'all chose Charles Bronson. So 135, well, how many people voted? 140 people voted. 56% chose Charles Bronson. So that's what we want to do. Let's get into it, man. This the one I got, Red Wave Video. Let me see if there's any better ones. Charles Bronson. 1.2 million. They got this one. One from prison. I don't want to see one from prison. The life and sad ending of Charles Bronson. Okay, he must be he must have passed away recently. Let's get into it. I don't want to see My name's Charlie. Charlie Bronson. I've been caged up for a quarter of a century. I've spent 22 of it. Solitary confinement. Damn. Prison. That boy got no prison skills. 22 out of 25? Year after year after year. You gotta be mad to survive it. It gets into your blood. You start to smell prison. You eat it. Sleep it. Shit it. Prison is like a cancer eating away at you. Your yeah. life is inside the belly of the beast. Britain's most dangerous prison. Why is he cuffed to that man? What the hell? He's dangerous. He'll cut your hand out. With a straw. Cutting edge. See, this is real life. This is like different. This is like cinematography type documentary, man. Wow. Question, did they really be wearing them wigs in the courtroom over there when y'all go to jail? Like when y'all in the court proceedings, they be putting them wigs on? That's, that's tough. Physically. Oh, okay. He actually physically picked me up above his head. That's how strong he is. And you've got to bear in mind that while he was doing this, he was like screaming like a banshee. Is this is the entrance? Anything. Talent. Call it for the lady. Who's up with the right? Checking it out. Then. Oh. He was like screaming like a banshee. I don't want to watch no intro. I've got a lot of coffee back in two weeks. I don't eat people. A swarthy character with a moustache came into the shop. We pulled a gun from his belt and I uh, knew then that we had serious trouble. He must be the most unsuccessful bank robber that's ever lived. Ha <laughs> ha! Get on his ass then! He's never got anything from any of them. Talk about it. He's always bodged them up and I don't know why he ever tried them again, really. Driving him insane. He's very talented. He's very creative, he's very understanding, he's very articulate. I've caught him a picture of a right-hander on the chin. <laughs> As he's going down, I've caught him with a left, a right, an upper, and another right. I've sparked him out. Got him a five-piece McNugget. He's only ever kissed me on the cheek before. He kissed me on the mouth. <laughs> In public. 
hats off. You graduated from a side chick? I'm oh, just playing. Let me. I'm gonna stop. I'm excited. I don't know. He's not a hard man. He's very soft-hearted man. But people don't know this. They only, they only know what they read in the papers. This is the intro. I already knew it. Let's just get into it. Charles Bronson was jailed for armed robbery in 1974 and should have been free hey. three years later. Except for a few fleeting weeks of freedom on the outside, he's been behind bars ever since. But Charlie has never killed anyone. A quarter of a century in the prison system has changed him both mentally and physically. A lot of people he wear that beard many here. Faces. Or that mustache. At times he is aggressive and dangerous, capable of incredible destruction. But Charlie, a prolific cartoonist, can also show great charm, warmth, and humor. Convicted certified cartoonist. How did Michael Peterson, a small time criminal, become Charles Bronson, Britain's most feared prisoner? Good question. Charles Bronson was born Michael Peterson on December the 6th, 1952. He was the second of three brothers living in this modest council house in Luton. His father, Joe, ran a decorating business and the family was respectable and law-abiding. Beautiful child, very loving, just an ordinary child, but he was very affectionate and he used to love having little trips out and things like that. Like a mama's boy. Loved going out with his dad. Okay. Down the park to feed ducks and things like that. He was just a normal, happy child. Although Ira remembers happy times, child... If y'all hear my daughter in the background, I am not sorry. Deal with it. He was beginning to have brushes with the law. The police knocked at the door one day where they'd been caught. They'd been taking shoe polish, laces, uh, stupid little things, what boys wouldn't have anyway. And they used to hide them in this, this lad's shed. And the police followed him this day. And that was the first time I ever known him to be in trouble. When he was in school, he didn't used to like being in a mixed school. He didn't like being in the classroom with girls. He never done uh, serious things. He just played up the teachers and okay. got cheeky and got expelled. At 15, Charlie went for a fresh start to live with his grandmother at Ellesmere Port in Merseyside. His best friend was John Bristow. The worst we got up to when I used to knock around with him was going around the back of shops, pinching the pot bottles, taking the bottles back for the money. That was it, like, there was nothing really worse than that. Charlie found work in a range of labouring jobs in the area. Okay. We were in the bull one night. Uh, I think we went for a darts match. And there was these two girls sat down and we got chatting to them, bought them a drink, and eventually we both married them. <laughs> And that's how Mickey Matty's wife Y'all found love in a club that is hard to do in 2021. It's impossible. I think he said I had nice big eyes. He was a, definitely a charmer. The better to see you with. He was very charming towards mm -hmm. me and very gentlemanly. He never you know, did anything at all. It was very, very protective towards me and looked after me and opened car doors for me. And he was really, just a like a gentleman. So I got pregnant and I was only so young and he was so young. And I mean, I, I had a very sheltered upbringing. The only thing to do was to get married. Isn't it? You had to get married in those days. He was actually made up. He said, oh, I'm going to really settle down now. His mum and dad used to say, I was so happy. He's going to get married to you, I'm, because he's going to settle down and keep out of trouble and everything. Which he did do. For a little bit. For a couple of years. <laughs> he started to go out on drinking binges. He'd go out in the evening and not come back for about four or five days. He just completely disappeared. Damn. I wouldn't know where he was. Then he'd come back after about five days. And that Sound like my baby mama. That cool. I'd say, where have you been? And he'd say, oh, I've been to um, my friends. I had a bad hangover. It's taken me five days to get over my hangover. And we was just sort of really drifting apart. We used to row all the time. And in fact, he was hardly ever at home then. And I know now that this is when he, used, he was planning the, 
the robbery that he went away for. Oh, okay. When he was on his drinking binges. That's when those type of ideas always come around, man. It'd be liquor, At man. 21, Charlie took part in an armed robbery on a garage in Cheshire with three other men. He carried the gun, and although no shots were fired, he was sentenced to seven years imprisonment. He was taken down in the cells uh, in Chester, and I went down. They allowed me down there to see him. I went with my sister, and he just said to me, don't worry, Mum, he says, I'll soon be out. And he was absolutely devastated. And so was I, I couldn't talk. Well, the solicitor did boy was say actually that if he behaved himself, he should be out in just over three years. So, solicitors, I now know that that means lawyers. Damn, what the heck? That means lawyers. I'm thinking, because I watched like a bare knuckle bot documentary, and I thought he said solicitor. I thought he was like somebody standing outside of a corner store <laughs> trying to sell stolen goods or something, or sell their body or something, which I do not condone, you two. Charlie found prison impossible to cope with. Within six months, he was taking his frustrations out on other inmates. A lifer, jailed for strangling his girlfriend and attacking his daughter, ended up with a broken nose and ribs. Oh, yeah. A few days later, Charlie attacked a man he believed was a grass. A who? Next, he assaulted two... Pr a grass? What? A what? ...prison officers with a stick. For that, he was given a beating, thrown into solitary confinement, and six months were added to his sentence. It was the beginning of a pattern that would last to this day. So my man originally went to jail for seven years and kept getting in trouble and somehow was in there a quarter century. Prisons ain't nice places. There's a lot of low-life people falling for drugs, mugging old women. Sound women. like uh, Batman. For Irene, it was all too much. This life's not for me. He's not going to get out. We'd be getting divorced if he wasn't in prison. We'd be getting divorced anyway, so what's the point? If I got locked down and sent to a quarter century, could I count on you to be there to support me mentally? Obviously not Irene. God damn you. So I thought, well, now I have to divorce him. Charlie's spiral of violence continued. He repeatedly glassed another inmate in the face. The man had infuriated him by banging on his ceiling from the cell above. At this time, Charlie was in prison with armed robber Frank Cook. In them particular days, Charlie wasn't a very big talker anyway. He was a rather sensitive young man. One of his own enemies was himself. Fear of just being normal. I would say at that particular time, he was over-controlled, which was to his detriment and to his mental health and quality of life within the prison system. Charlie was literally going out of his mind. From the jump, Charlie didn't sound like a very mentally stable person anyway, so this is bound to break him. A secure hospital awaited. It was 1979. Here, he met fellow patient Chris Reed. He was a very um, thoughtful person, very considerate. He genuinely cared about people. When he first went to Rome, when he was OK, he just went downhill because they put him on drugs. All they're interested in doing is controlling you by either two ways, by physical or mental. And they control you mentally by uh, giving, you, giving you drugs. One month, and he seemed all right. The next month we went, he'd put on nearly three stone, where they were pumping drugs into him. He didn't even look like my son when we got there. He just drugged, he was drugged all the time. We just couldn't even understand his letters sometimes. He used to talk about having the drugs, and he used to say that if he if Cousin. he didn't have them willingly, then they'd make him take them. So he didn't really have a lot of choice. And half the time he was drugged up anyway when they were giving him the next lot. But he didn't he didn't even have the heart to fight back. Charlie became no stranger to what was known as the liquid kosh, the drug Largactyl. These Largactyl. dramatizations is nice. Uh, this is it. You can seize upon it, all your body. I feel like I'm up. Charlie. You can uh, become paralyzed on it. You can get locked. You're, you're eating all the time. 
no. some of them used to give him fits Sorry. and make him wet himself and things like that. They were really awful things that they used to do to him. Charlie found it difficult to mix with most of the other Broadmoor patients. One day, whilst watching television, one of them began staring at him. I said, look, what do you want, mate? He said, I wonder if you could do us a favour. Straight away, I thought, homosexuality. And I was sitting next to Ronnie, Ronnie Cray. Ronnie's dig me in the ribs, he says. Ronnie Cray. Oh, my God. Did Ronnie plus Charles, huh? That ain't it. I was sitting next to Ronnie, Ronnie Cray. Ronnie's dig me in the ribs, he says. What you is a now? So I said, come on then. I said, what you want? He said, I wonder if you'd hit me. I said, what are you talking about? You want me to hit you? He says, well, I like people to hit me. So I've caught him a pinch of a right-hander on the chin. <laughs> As he's going down, I've caught him with a left, a right, an upper, and another right. I sparked him out. He's out cold. He gave him a five piece deluxe chicken from Nando's with a side of the Brazilian rice that they be having. No drink. Oh, and as he's coming round, he went, Ooh, oh, that was lovely. He, he lost three teeth. Mm -hmm. I fractured his cheekbone. And he had 12 stitches in his right eye. He was in a bit of a state. Yikes. A rooftop protest by a patient at Broadmoor Top Security Hospital in Berkshire. The man has been shouting complaints about hospital conditions. And it's understood he wants to be transferred to a hospital in Liverpool. So in rooftop stuff was to just... Get out of Broadmoor, Charlie became the thing. first man to make it onto the roof in a hundred years. He had three rooftop protests uh, about conditions, about he wanted to move out of there. He just had enough. He just, the way he's been treated with drugs. But yeah, they confined him and they kept him in conditions which uh, were bad. And he just, he just said it. He wanted out. That's what he wanted. He wanted to get out of Broadmoor. I know at one time his brother and his father turned up to beg him to come down. And uh, it broke their hearts. And it broke his heart as well, seeing them. Because they walked, as they walked away, he could see... You know, his dad's shoulders were slumped and everything, and he was really upset about it. And um, it just broke everyone's heart, I think, to see him up there. Eventually, Charlie was moved from Broadmoor. Back in the mainstream prison system, his attacks continued. You got Liverpool? It meant more long periods of solitary confinement. If you take somebody from a natural cage, 24 hours, 23 hours a day, and, and, and then stick him outside in, in the community, just drop him outside the gate and, and say, get on with it. Who's going to survive? Who's, who's going to be able to cope with that? Yeah. But that's exactly what happened to Charlie in 1987, having served what should have been three years, but in fact became 14. Damn, that boy. Free man again, he went to stay with his parents in Aberystwyth. Once he saw the sea, he brought all his kit with him uh, for training, because he was a bit fanatic for training. And he used to run along the beach about six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> he really enjoyed it, but he says, oh, I could, no way could I live here, because it was so small. He needed some more he city didn't like boy. people walking behind his back because he'd been stabbed uh, in prison by someone in the back. My husband took him over to this pub and um, he went up to the bar and the man said how much the round was. He didn't have a clue what to give that man because he didn't know the money. He didn't know how people dressed. He did, he'd never seen traffic like the traffic that it was about today. In fact, I think years. one of the warders said to him when he left that prison that day, we'll see you soon. Hey, no, we're not about reform. You was in this bitch 23-7. 23 hours out of the day, you was locked up. Now you got all that freedom. You're bound to go mad or you're going to go crazier outside. He knew uh, that Michael wasn't ready for the outside world. 
prison system failed him. Charlie stayed in Aberystwyth for just Lots five days before going to London. Then he went to Super London. fit oh, and charged man. with pent up anger, he decided his future was in boxing. Okay, come here and take out, mate, with Charlie Brunson. His coach gave him the fight name Charles Bronson after the actor. Although Charlie had never seen a Bronson film, it was a name that would stick. Bro, bro, chill. What Charlie lacked in style, he made up for with aggression. Definitely a character in there. But his lack of control proved too much of a handful, even in the boxing ring. This bout only went to three rounds before he was disqualified. He did win a few fights, but the prize money didn't go far. Charlie was broke. Charlie was too much of a brawler, man. The longer his mustache grew, the more power he had in his fist. Like, oh, no. The door opened, and this very large guy came into the shop. Rather a swarthy character with a mustache. And he strode to the counter in a fairly purposeful way. And when he got to the counter, he didn't stop as he came through the gap in the counter before the gun started to appear out of the waistband. I realized we had serious trouble. Well, he was extremely aggressive and agitated. Are these his drawings? Those are, those are top tier. I People ain't gonna lie, that like, dope for like comics. Think that a, a jeweler's safe is probably like in Aladdin's cave, uh, which when opened will spill its contents almost onto the floor like an Alibaba cartoon. But of course, the vast majority of the stock's in the windows, and uh, it's not in the safe till we close. I said there was no money in the safe, that it was all in the till. He grabbed that and turned to the door, it was gone. He's an extremely large individual and could have probably uh, blown all of us over, particularly me. Charlie got away with jewelry worth around a thousand pounds but he was no more able to pull off a successful robbery than cope with life on That's the outside. It? it didn't take long for the police to catch up with him. After just 69 days of freedom, he was back behind bars. Okay. Three, three and a half months, a bit of two and a half months. Huh? Newspaper. I don't know what's happening oh, here. Oh, not They're cutting me off with my family. I'm fucking lost. After his 69-day spell of freedom, Charlie was back in a cell, lonely and isolated, and feeling how long? for friends on the outside. He began writing to a friend, Kelly Ann Cook, who he had met during his release. Okay, she paid regular good. visits to him in prison. You have to be more perfect than perfect with him. Um, and you have to... She's better than Irene. Irene put a bowl on top of her head and cut her bangs. So this is a much better choice. To be perfect in his eyes. You mustn't have any foibles, whatever. You don't smoke. You don't drink. You always wear dresses. You never wear jeans. Um, you have to be absolutely perfect. But in Charlie's eyes, Kellyanne was perfect enough. And then one day, he said, Do you know, I love you, princess. I said, yeah. We're all coy. Cool, Charlie yeah. had game. And he said, Yeah, I really, really love you. I should have seen it before. He got involved with a girl called Kellyanne, um, which I think didn't help him one little bit. And then he kissed me. Yeah. And he'd only ever kissed me on the cheek before. Because on the mouth <laughs> in public sort of I think it played with his mind a little bit because he wasn't used to relationships said, for a start and I don't think she was the best person to have a relationship with at that time for him 
he asked me, would I marry him? And he'd smuggled in a ring for me. And he put it on my finger. It was a wedding ring. And that's the ring. Was all three of them? The marriage <laughs> never took place. However, Charlie wasn't without other female admirers. He's told me he's been engaged to about four different women during this time he's been inside. All he's done is written to women and they've written back to him, professed their love and all this and that, and he's took it all, you know, all for granted and, and thought, oh, everything's going to be lovely, I'll get engaged to this one, and then, of course, like, so many Charlie months down had, the line hey. after he sent him a ring and all that, they don't want it. Charlie had a lot of a better love life than most of us free. God damn. Yeah, full of them? Not than me, I think but. half of them just like the thought of being with someone that's got a name for themselves and I think he's very vulnerable. The prison system was unable to contain or control Charlie. Increasingly desperate, his protests and attacks were becoming more extreme. In Belmarsh prison, three Iraqi hijackers just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I think the bloke was a, a, a London bloke that he was after and um, he'd given Mick a load of abuse from his cell and Mick swore then like you know if I ever get hold of him I'm going to take him hostage and, um, and make him take his words back and he happened to be with the Iraqis when he went to take him hostage so he had to take them all. We yeah. see up more toes being tickled especially by the rain. So I took my boots off and tied one of the Iraqis put a rope around his neck and I told him tickle me toes what in the world charlie sweet memories typically for Char charlie was out the a bdsm what the hell going on i'm gonna tear your spinal cord from your body if you do not tickle my toes youtube we do not contone the tickling of toes under any type of scrutiny or uh 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 uh, spinal cord removal. I don't condone none of that. I'm just here for entertainment purposes. Charlie, the seven-hour incident had almost comic irony. He, he thought it was Very quite funny, funny because the Iraqis come over and they took hostages on the bit. plane and they come well, for not, asylum not and all part. that and he said, and they end up in a madman's cave, like, you know, with me. But the siege meant another seven-year sentence for Charlie. For them, it's Oh, one you come the bright side of life. Always look up the bright side of death. Okay, spit it then. Oh. We don't want no copyright. Bright side of an apple pie. Or is this a freestyle? Hostage taking became a regular habit for Charlie. At one prison, he even took the governor victim. The governor from Park Lane was on the phone and he said, like, will you please speak to him? He's t taken me hostage. And I spoke to Mick and I just said to him, let that man go now. And he says, well, I want you to come and see me. And I said, no, I'm not coming unless you let that man go. So he let him go. But I think that was just a cry for help. He's never told me why he'd done it, but something obviously upset him and he just wanted to see me. I didn't go. I wrote and told him off. <laughs> By now, Charlie's fearsome reputation was known throughout the prison system. It took at least six men to guard him on what was known as a riot unlock. Most of his time was spent in solitary confinement, where to date he's clocked up 22 years. In this regime, prisoners have to show they can behave before they're allowed back into the normal system. All right, man, that's part one. We definitely gonna do part two. Just give me a couple seconds, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on post. Let me know what you think so far. I know y'all have, have y'all seen this shit already, though.